So hopefully this does the trick. We're doing a wireless electric fence collar on Rhino. I also have an electric training collar with him, but when I'm cleaning and taking care of plants or I'm getting into a television show or a YouTube show, um, I'm not really paying attention to him while he's outside around the chickens. So hopefully this will give the chickens some relief uh, that they can run away and get out of where he's able to go. But it's gonna be a learning curve for him. Um, uh, let me show you the hub. This is what we've got, Pet Safe Wireless Pet Containment System. And you could buy replacement collars for it, some with replacement batteries or some that are rechargeable. And the one that we got is rechargeable, so that's good. Um, save us a little money on batteries, etc. But I realized yesterday after uh, thinking about my plant tour as I'm going through plant care here, um, <laughs> I didn't show you all of my plants, so I'm going to show you before I go to work this morning. I'm pretty sure I showed you my Syngoniums over here, the White Butterfly, uh, Strawberry Cream, and Cream Illusion, and then my Ficus Benjamina Nicole Weeping Fig, which were very popular back in the 80s and 90s. I remember my mom had a Weeping Fig. Um, hers wasn't variegated. And I don't think the variegated ones were very popular at that time because you've been watching TV and things like that where I do see weeping figs. Um, yeah, I don't see any variegated ones. This is my Ficus Elastica Belize. It's a rubber tree plant. There's Diffenbachia Amy, which my Amy is doing really good. I had a Camille and I bought it in harsh shape and she just didn't make it. Miss Camille didn't. Aglaonema tigris, and I got another one upstairs. I believe I showed you that one because I think I remember talking about it. Arabica coffee tree, hypostis or polka dot plant, uh, Neanthe palm, parlor palm right there. That one will only get about three foot tall, so it's not a huge palm, so I got room for huge plants. And <laughs> I've got one that I had a friend pick up for me, So, um, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'll just have to show you. That's a Justina Warnecki eye. Um, I love how it's got all these different colors of stripes on it, and then it has like this tornado look like a spider plant bonnie with the twisted leaves. I, I love that plant. I've had to cut off a couple leaves off of it, but overall it looks great. Hoya, uh, Obovada, Fernwood, Sansevieria, which is now considered a Dracaena. Dracaena tricolor, which I just watered it. I can't, can't figure this plant out quite yet, but it's not dead, so I'm not giving up on it. I'm either, I either overwater it or I underwater it. <laughs> There's no in between for me. There's a cylinder snake plant right there, a Sansevieria. Peperomia watermelon, which I got it facing towards the sun right now. It's looking a little droopy. I wonder when I got to water it next. I'll have to check. But I got it on clearance at Hopkinsville Low uh, Kroger for like two bucks. I couldn't pass it up. It's lost several leaves, but it's not dead. My silver squill, which I have to fertilize today. And then I've got to fertilize, I believe, my golden pothos over there. So I'm going to show you how I fertilize and I'll show you how I shine my leaves and help keep them protected from bugs, pests. Well, bugs are a pest sometimes. And I should say pests because not all bugs are harmful. They're beneficial. So I'm, I got this silver squill here. Um, I'm going to fertilize that. And what else was I going to do? Oh, the... The way I shine it also helps with uh, bacteri bacteria and fungal diseases as well. It's not bulletproof for any of the things I've listed, but it's an organic way to shine up your plants and at least try to stay ahead of pests and disease. So let me find my tripod and get set up. Well, it seems I can't find my tripod uh, and I got to get this done and try to get a little bit of cleaning done before I go into work at 10 o'clock and it's already 7.38. So I'll just skip the whole tripod thing. So I've got Neptune Harvest Fish and Seaweed Fertilizer and I bought this off Amazon, which uh, directly goes to Neptune's Harvest. They just have, there's 
post it on their website and then on they have a store on Amazon. But this one's 18 ounces on Amazon and you could get a 32 ounce one for like a dollar or two more. So I was stupid and ordered this one. But that's okay. Um, just next time I'll make sure I get the bigger one. Um, getting double the amount for a double a dollar or two more that's just that's just a no-brainer so I shook it up a little bit and be careful because this stuff stinks like the sea like dead fish and stuff I just got a little hole poked in the top of it because I don't want to pour too much um, it says one tablespoon per gallon so what I do since I'm not fertilizing like that you know I'm fertilizing in smaller batches right now it's it was winter and now it just turned spring so I don't need to heavily fertilize so I just stick it in a jar I don't even have to mm, hang on okay never mind I guess it doesn't want to pause I was gonna tighten that up a little better but it don't matter I just shook it enough so it mixes in there I've been using Neptune's Harvest Fertilizers for about three years now, and I really enjoy them. I like that it's a small business. Um, it's sourced in our country, United States, which is a good thing. It helps keeping the money lo as local as I can and like, right? I don't mind buying things from other countries, but I like to help our uh, whatever you want to call it out. Our economy there we go see I haven't even had enough coffee yet it's just sitting right there so <laughs> probably gonna have an overkill on fertilizer I'm gonna have too much and end up dumping it out but you see how much I put in there so it's not a huge waste I got right here is neem oil a drop of that Dawn dish soap right there and then the rest of rainwater how much neem oil did I put in here probably about a quarter of a teaspoon and I just put one tiny drop of dish soap in there. See, it's not even really, you can't see it suds. That's how much dish soap is in there. The dish soap is just to help the oil emulsify with the water. But I shake it up every time before I use it. I like to spray my plant. Grab either microfiber or a piece of like, hospital gown that I cut up into rags or paper towel, whatever's handiest. This I just throw in the compost bucket over there when I'm done with it, so it's still not going to waste. And then I just wipe the leaves off, which is hard to do one-handed, but it really does shine them up. See how shiny that is? Look at this Hartley philodendron and how shiny it is. So whenever I water or fertilize, um, I've been shining my leaves. It helps get the dust off, which helps your plants absorb more sunlight, uh, as well as the other things I mentioned earlier. And it just makes your plants look that much better to have them shiny. Um, I don't suggest leaf shine from miracle Grow or any other leaf shine type products because they clog the pores of your, of your plants. And they're not really natural and things like that. This Just the neem oil is better all the way around because you're getting that added protection on top of it. So stick with the neem oil. Okay, I believe I've got to fertilize my golden pothos in the dining room. Which this one's not as variegated as the one in the living room because I haven't had it as long. And if you can see, it's starting to get variegation on it. But the more sunlight you give them the more variegation I'll get, which I was surprised by how much my living room golden pothos has got variegation on it, being that I don't have a lot of light in my living room. I got that front porch on and it's an east facing window, so it really doesn't get too much. Which pothos will do fine in low light like that, but the variegation is what shocked me. So I'm going to lightly, lightly fertilize. I lightly water too because I don't want it dripping all over the floor. And I got my grow light underneath there and everything. And I just don't want it smelling like fish for, for sure. So we'll just, until it starts to barely drip out of the bottom. Trying to avoid the leaves.
and I like to have the cup underneath it for when it does drip out I just catch it back but you know what I think I dumped enough in there that I'm not gonna worry about it if it drips out so I'll take some leaf shine after this too and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done um, since I've been watering more frequently since it's getting more daylight out I've been shining them up a little um, more often so it doesn't look that dull so I don't know how much of an improvement is going to show I know that silver squill I haven't watered for a while and I've definitely never cleaned it so that one you could see a bit of a difference on but yeah I'll show you there she is yeah you could just see it gave it a little facelift there with the shininess so that's how I keep my plants looking um, nice and prevent them from uh, several different things. And I don't know if I showed you my neon pothos that's looking kind of sad. It's, see, it doesn't have full roots on it, so I was overwatering it, underwatering it, blah, 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 blah. But it's living and it's putting out new growth, so maybe eventually I'll just have to prune off those ugly leaves after it gets some more leaves on it and we'll call it good. But that's the neon pothos and I just love this bright color especially in this darker wood house I think it looks really nice and then this is my Chinese money plant uh, Pilia peperomioid and I've killed one of them and this one had a lot more leaves on it but it kind of I killed it back but it's growing back so we're doing good <laughs> and my wandering Jew and then I've got propagating baby rubber tree plant up there, Peperomia obtusifolia, and I'm not sure what uh, variety of snake plant that is. Just to make sure I showed you, <laughs> if I didn't show you in the other one. Oh, and my Scandapsis exotica, which they also call Scandapsis pothos, and pothos, like golden pothos, I can't remember the scientific uh, name for them, but whatever, you basically treat these two the same and they look pretty similar. That's how come they're both called pothos. Anyway, I thank you for hanging out with me today. Um, I'm going to finish drinking my coffee, get some cleaning done and go to work. I love you. And so does Jesus. God bless.